three, performing function operations and compositions. So I went ahead and started um, with um, the vocabulary. A power function is in the form of y equals ax to the b power. And that is why it's called a power function is because of the exponent, the b, because that is the power area of your equation. And that is when, uh, this is when a is a real number and b is a rational. Um, the second thing we're going to look at um, in this lesson is a composition. A composition of a function g with a function f is h of x equals g of f of x. And then um, we have some rules for the operations of functions. Um, the addition is h of x equals f of x plus g of x. So my example, I'm going to use um, f of x is 3x f of x equals 3x and g of x equals x plus 3. So in the addition, my example would be um, h of x equals f of x, which is 3x plus g of x, which is x plus 3. So we can see 3x plus x gives us 4x plus 3. In subtraction, again, we're still using f of x and g of x. And so we want um, h of x equals 3x minus x plus 3. Now remember, in this one, because of the subtraction, we have to um, use the subtraction and distribute it to what's inside the parentheses, everything inside the parentheses. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3x minus x minus 3. So 3x minus x gives me 2x minus 3. And again, there is um, my answer. Alright, next, uh, next thing we're going to look at is multiplication. h of x equals f of x times g of x. So again, we're still using the same f of x and g of x. This time we're going to put it in a multiplication. h of x equals 3x times x plus 3. Again, we want to distribute this 3x to everything in the parentheses. So 3x times x gives me 3x squared. And then 3x times 3 gives me 9x. And then the last operation of functions is the division. h of x equals f of x divided by g of x. Last time, we're going to use this particular f of x and g of x. So I'm going to have, by example, I have um, 3x divided by x plus 3. And that one right there, you're not going to reduce down any more than that when it wants to simplify. And so there's all the examples of the operations of functions. Again, the composition, we'll get into to that later on in the uh, lesson. But the power function, um, you will see also because um, you will uh, use, you will have to multiply your a and um, a times whatever your b to the um, x, uh, your x to the b power will be. at now is adding and subtracting functions. We have f of x equals a negative 3x to the one-third power and g of x is equal to a negative x to the one-third power. So we're going to look at f of, f of x plus g of x. So we're going to go ahead and rewrite it with f of x being my negative 3x to the one-third and then there's my plus sign and then g of x, which is a negative x to the one-third. Now, one thing I can do is I can rewrite this negative x to the one-third <coughs> as um, I can rewrite it as this, a negative 3x to the one-third plus a negative 1 times x to the one-third. Now, 
now seeing it this way, we have x to the one third and x to the one third. And so we can go ahead in a separate parentheses, we can say a negative three minus one because we want to add the whole numbers that are attached to our x to the one third since they are the exact same. So we only have to list that once because when we're working with addition or subtraction, um, the x and the um, power need to be the exact same or we cannot add them or subtract them. And so I have a negative three minus one gives me a negative four times my x to the one third. And there's my addition. Now we're gonna move over to b of x, uh, b being f of x minus g of x. So again, we're gonna look and we're gonna replace it. f of x is still my minus three x to the one third. And then my g of x is still a negative x to the one third. So again, you notice over here we did a plus, a negative. Over here on the new one we have a minus a negative. So we know a minus a negative becomes a positive. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that as a negative 3x to the one-third plus x to the one-third. Now again, anytime you have your x to the one-third, just like I did right here, it's the same as saying 1 times x to the one-third. So I'm going to go ahead and write that over here now because again, I want to add my whole numbers which would be a negative three and a plus one. Um, and then I'm gonna leave my x to the one third because that has to be identical in order for us to add or subtract. And so a negative three plus one gives us a negative two and we keep our x to the one third. So there's our subtraction. So again, on this one, just to, re, uh, just to remind you why this is a plus is because a minus a negative becomes a positive. The next concept we want to look at is multiplying and dividing our function um, operation. So um, the operation, of course, is multiply. Um, again, this over here, the operation would be the divide. Um, our function of f of x, which they give us, is 2x squared. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that with 2x squared. And then times the function of g of x, which is x to the 1 half. <coughs> now, remember when you have multiplication separating your exponents, you actually add them. So I'm going to go ahead and say... Um, 2 times x to the 2 plus 1 half power. Now what you have to keep in mind is when you're working with fractions, you can only add them when they have a common denominator. And so we have to look and find out what's common between 2 and 1 half. Well what I can do is make 2 um, into a fraction that has 2 on the bottom, but in order to do that, I have to multiply the top by 2. So I can go ahead and rewrite this as 2 times x to the 4 over 2 plus 1 half. How? So 4 over 2 plus 1 over 2, so 4 plus 1, let me write this a little bit better, 4 over 1 half. Um, so 4 plus 1 gives us 5, and so I can say 2x to the 5 halves power, and that is your answer. Now, in division, in division you have to remember, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it. I've got my f of x, which is 2x squared, over g of x, which is x to the 1 half. Now, when you're working with division, you have to subtract the bottom exponent from the top exponent. And so I'm going to write this as 2 times x to the 2 minus 1 half. Again, just like we did over here in addition, we have to have a common denominator when we're working with fractions. So 
So since we've already found the common denominator on this one, I'm going to go ahead and use it again. So I can go ahead and say, well, this is um, 2 to the 4, x to the 4 halves, 2 times x to the 4 halves minus 1 half. And so this time, 4 minus 1 gives us 3. And so I can say 2 to the x to the 3 halves power. So again, all we've done is we found the common denominator, which was 2. We had to multiply the top of the um, of the of this one, which became 2 times 2, because whatever you do to the bottom, which is we put a 2, we have to do to the top. So that's why we did 2 times 2. And then we subtracted the 1 half. So that is how you multiply and divide functions. The last concept for uh, this lesson is the composition and functions. Um, we still have our f of x and our g of x. This time I chose f of x to be 2x cubed and g of x to be x to the negative 1. Now, the first one we're going to look at is f of g of x. So what I do is I go ahead and write, because what this is saying is f when um, x is g of x. So I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to go ahead and write f of x first. So I have 2x cubed. Now, within my f of x, I need to put g of x where my x is. So now I'm going to say 2 times x to the negative 1 cubed. You only replace the x. You leave everything else the exact same. So now what we want to do is we want to think about our property of exponents because we have a negative 1 separated by a 3. And we know that we, when we have a negative 1 power separated by a 3 power, that's the same as an actual multiplication. So x to the negative 1 times 3. A negative 1 times 3 gives us a negative 3. So we can go ahead and rewrite that as 2x to the negative 3. Again, based on exponents, we know we can't have a negative exponent. So in order to get rid of the negative exponent, we have to move it to the denominator. And so our answer is going to end up being 2 over x cubed. And now we have a positive exponent, and we are good. So 2 over x cubed would be the answer to f of g of x. Now we're going to move to g of f of x. Again, I like to start by putting my g of x. So I'm going to say x to the negative 1. Now within this x right here, I need to put f of x. f of x is 2x cubed to the negative 1. <coughs> so again, we're looking at um, a 3 separated by a negative 1. So that lets us know that we're going to have um, x to the 3 times a negative 1. However, we have this 2 that needs this negative 1 also. 2 to the negative 1 times. Now, the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, my 3 times a negative 1. That gives me a negative 3. So now I have 2 to the negative 1, x to the negative 3. Again, we cannot have negative exponents. So what we have to do is move both of these, because they're both negative, to the denominator. So our answer will end up being, let me put equals down here beside all these, and 1 over 2x cubed. And there is your answer. I'm going to go ahead and put the equals down here, over here too, so you understand which one is my actual answer, even though I've circled them. So again, what I've done is because of this negative 1 exponent and this negative 3 exponent, we moved it to the denominator. Anytime it's to the first exponent, you do not have to show um, the exponent when it's a 1. All right, and then the last one I want to do is f of f of x. And so, again, I'm going to start with f of x, which is 
2x cubed. But a, this x now becomes f of x again. So 2 times um, 2x cubed cubed. Now, with this, you have to remember that this cubed only goes to the parentheses. It doesn't go to this 2 out here. So you have to do the, the exponent to the parentheses before anything else. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. We have to remember that this exponent of 3 has to go to the 2. And so I'm going to say 2 times 2 cubed. And because x cubed is separated to, uh, by parentheses to the cubed again, we can say x to the 3 times 3 power. So x to the 3 times 3 gives us um, just x to the 9. And then we have 2 cubed. 2 times 2 gives us 4 times 2 gives us 8. So I can say 2 times 8 x to the 9. And now we can go ahead and multiply it by our 2 on the outside. So it ends up being 2 times 8 gives us 16 x to the 9th. And that is our answer of f of f of g. Um, f of x, sorry. f of f of x. So what you're doing is you're going to start every one of these. Anytime you see um, a letter and then a parenthesis, another letter, a parenthesis, and another letter. What that means is you want to start with your original letter and then replace every x with that um, that's in that original function with the second letter's function, which is what we did. This was the original function. This is replacing the x of the original function with the other function, which was x to the negative 1 and then solving from there.